So yeah, just while we're waiting, if you've not had a look at the schedule, we've got three days packed with um, loads of live demos on this stream. So there's loads of hair demos, there's um, some skin demos, and there's also some waxing demos and advice. So if you have a look, if you're interested in other areas of um, If you're interested in other areas of the industry, then um, do check out the schedule. I'm just checking that we're, that we're live on the platform. I think everything's going okay now. Here we are. Sorry about that. Couldn't find the uh, button on this platform this time. No worries. So, uh, stop video. Yep, yeah, there we go. I think that's all right there for you. Fabulous. Yep, yeah, is that good, Eve? Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. I think you can see that quite clearly. Excellent. So just so that everyone can see you properly, I'm going to turn off my uh, my video now and we should just be able to see you. I'll come back in at the end for questions. See you later. Hey, hi, everyone. So um, we're just going to cover some awesome winter nail trends. Um, the first nail design that I'm going to show you is going to be a tortoiseshell. Uh, design um, and if you've been scrolling social media at all at the moment you'll see that the tortoiseshell look is absolutely massive all over the social media with nail techs and um, one of the first things I'm going to cover um, as we design this tortoiseshell nail is um, where to get your inspiration from and how to actually then translate and pit that on the nail so I've just gone on um, Google and I found this image here. It's of a handbag with um, a tortoiseshell uh, pattern. Um, there's this really fab creation here, which is really useful for nail techs when they find um, gauging their inspiration and how to then place that on the nail. Um, it's been created by Rachel Wilders and it's the nail window. Um, and you've got the different lengths and shapes of nail. Uh, if we just look at this nail tip that I'm going to work on, I'm just working as if it was a natural nail. So I'm going to take this short natural shape. And what we can do is we can place this over the image that we've chosen like this, and you can place it on different areas. So if we place it there, you can see there's a lot more of the amber and only a smaller amount of the uh, darker colors. If we went here, it would be more for the darker colors, or we could just go for you know, um, a match um, half and half, or even, you know, going here. I'm going to choose about there. So we've got quite a lot of the beautiful amber tones and then we've got quite a lot of that negative space. So we can then place that on there. We can either take a photo and work from our phone or we can just work from it like this. And this helps you see um, where to pit your patterns for different shape nails and lengths. And it really can be quite helpful to you. And then you can see on this one that I've created previously, um, it translates then into the design. One of the other things that's really big this um, autumn winter is uh, negative spaces and creating segment patterns. And you'll see when we create this nail that we create the amber background and that amber background gives some sort of negative space. So firstly, to create that background, so what I've just done here, I've just got my nail tip holder, my nail tip, and I've buffed to remove the shine. It's really important that we buff to remove the shine so that the gel polish can adhere and cure. On a mixing tile here, so this is just a blank credit card that you can get off the internet, or you can use any mixing palette you wish. I have created the right consistency of that really nice amber tones. So if we look at here on this inspiration we're taking, we've got the slightly lighter orange, the slightly deeper amber, and there's like the browns and the blacks. Layering is really important with a design like this to get that true effect of the tortoiseshell. So some brands will have a translucent 
amber colour already in their range. If you've got the right tone of orange, then you can just mix that with some base coat. Um, alternatively, you need to just mix your own um, colour. So that's what I've done here. I've used some um, orange, some yellow, um, a little bit of dark red to give it that really rich depth with a little bit of base coat to make it translucent. So have a little play around to get the colour that you desire. Um, if you haven't got a bright orange, you can make that by mixing yed, red and, um, sorry, by mixing a um, deep red colour and a yellow tone. Okay, so I've just got here a flat brush, so any brush of your choice. And I'm just going to pick a little bit of that up on my brush and place it on the nail. And I'm really going to pull it out. I don't want this to have a lot of colour because we want it to have that translucent look to give up, give those layers and depth. That is my first layer, so you can see it's really nice and thin. It's got that yellowy, orangey, amber tone. And that is going to cure in the lamp now for 30 seconds. So depending on the look that you want to create, you could create a more reddy, orangey, yellow, browny tone uh, to suit different customers' requirements, the inspiration you're working from, or also what suits the different skin tones. The reason that I've mixed it with base rather than top is the base will um, spread a little bit easier than if you mixed it with a top coat. Also, we want to have that sticky layer in between our layers because when we layer up the um, effect, what we want is the top, uh, the base coat because it will just bleed ever so slightly and just give that slightly um, more blended look. Okay, so that first layer is cured and we are going to repeat again. Again, keeping it really, really thin. We're going to layer up so you can always add more later on in your nail design. And again, that's going to cure for 30 seconds. To give a lot more depth, you can actually layer up slightly different variations of the colour. So we could uh, say we use this on the base, we could use a more orangey one on the top, um, a more yellowy one to give uh, different dimensions and even more depth to that nail look. So once that's cured, I'm going to swap over to a fine line brush. It's a little bit larger. It's, um, it's in between um, a very small tip and a long liner, but it's your preference. And um, you can alternatively use a flat brush like this still, but I find by using a fine liner, you can give it a slight more blended look and it doesn't look quite so uniform, so you get more of this natural pattern. So I'm taking that out of the lamp. You can also not cure this second layer of the amber colour if you wish. So if you want the product to bleed more and create um, uh, more of a, a bleeding look, then you can, it's up to you. So now what we're going to do is we are going to work with a brown and a black to create the tortoiseshell pattern. So I've mixed here, um, I didn't have a shade in my range, so I've mixed a brown. I've mixed this by using um, black, a light brown, a slightly reddy brown and some orange. What you don't want with this look is to have too much of a red tone in the black um, as then when it's thinned out slightly to create this effect, it will give you a little bit of a purple tone, which doesn't go too well with this look. So if we look here, we can follow this pattern or we can do whatever we wish. And you can see, not being really, really neat, doesn't need to be straight lines, you want that slightly uneven look. And you can see, I'm just scooping the brown up, and patting it in. Don't worry if some areas are a little bit more translucent than others. Again, that is going to be part of the pattern and the layering effect. Okay, 
And as you're creating the design, if you feel that you want to change it from what's in your window, you can do so. So you can put a little bit more somewhere else if you feel that it needs it. Okay. So that's the brown. I'm just going to wipe my brush on a napkin just to clean it. And now this is black. When you're choosing a black tone, make sure it is a true black because a lot of gels, when you um, get them, the blacks can actually have a bit of a greeny or bluey undertone. And again, that could um, ruin your final look. You can do this look with art gels um, and gel paints, but I do find it works better with the gel polish as it's self-leveling, so it bleeds and gives you a better effect. So now we are going to pop the black under and round the brown and exactly the same technique just ever so slightly overlap and just blend in a little bit and if you get these slightly translucent patches, don't worry, you can either go over again or actually sometimes in certain areas, it really works for the pattern. Don't worry too much about blending it perfectly because as we know with animal patterns and things, they, they aren't completely perfect. Okay, so once you're happy with that, that's now going to cure in the lamp for 30 seconds. And again, with patterns like this, when you are working on a client, and if you're working on all five fingers, um, you might just do a pop cut, um, a pop nail. So you might just have one that has this pattern on, or you might have all five. Don't worry about getting them all exactly uniform. That's something really important to remember when we do designs. So they might be in slightly different areas on different nails. So we may come here, and then on another nail, we may work somewhere else. So when you are working on the nail, do remember that you don't need to worry about getting them all perfectly symmetrical together. And something that is in, really in this season, it's creating segments of design. So you may have a small line that's in this pattern. You may just have a corner of a nail and there may be a top corner here and a lower corner there. So that is something that's really in at the moment rather than designs all over the nails. Okay, so I'll take that out. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to layer that black and brown again. If you want to create more depth, you see this is a darker one and this I've just put a little bit more orange, you can do that for your second layer. I'm going to place this and ever so lightly, carefully overlap where you did before. And again, that's going to create a slightly translucent layered effect. Don't worry if when your brush is doing this, that it is putting some um, markings into your gel polish, because when you top coat this, that will all smooth over. And the beauty of this design, if you aren't ha quite happy with the shadings, the colors, the patterns, because you're layering it up, you're able to amend it as you work. If I wanted this, this brown to now be darker, I could mix a shade that was a little bit darker and apply it over the top. And again, the same with the black and the amber tones. Okay, so I'm now coming in with my black and repeating it again, the same thing, just ever so slightly overlapping where we'd done it previously. So I'm going to cure that now for 30 seconds. And now what we're going to do is we are carrying on with our layered effect. And we're taking back the amber color that we've mixed. What I'm actually going to do to create even more depth, so this very orangey 
effect is I'm going to take a little bit of base coat and mix it with the orange, tiny little bit of the shade we've mixed. And when I go over this, I'm going to leave a little bit more in certain areas. Again, this is going to give this layered effect. If we take this over here, you can see where you've got some really, really deep um, amber colours. So I'm taking this out and I'm going to come over. So as you can see, it's quite orange there, but when we use the flat of our brush to pull it out, it thins it. And I'm just using all of that over the whole nail. So I'm going to really blend it over so we're not using too much. And if we take a little bit of that, we can even just dab an outline and give a little more depth to certain areas. We can layer this nail as much as possible, as much as we'd like. I do just tend to just do it with those two layers. And you can see where the slightly darker amber is just really making that design pop. So once we're happy with that, we're going to cure that for 30 seconds. And we are now going to use a Foil. So this is the um, KM Nails and Beauty Monochrome Foil Leaf. And it's all sorts of different beautiful autumnal colours. I'm going to pick out some of the copper colours here. And I'm just going to get my tweezers and break that up. Bring that up because we only want a very small amount. So again, this autumn winter, little pops of sparkle as opposed to glitter. So um, flakes and holographic plates and things like that are really on trend. So we'll take this out. And now I'm just going to use my brush. And this layer is cured, but it has a dispersion layer. So your flakes will nicely stick to the tacky layer of gel. And if you feel it's a little bit too much, you can just take a dotting tool and it will actually break up whilst it's on the nail. Well. So just adding just a touch, just to really highlight that design rather than overshadow it. Break it up. One more little bit down here. Okay, once you're happy with that, you can now go on with your top coat. I'm now just taking my non-wipe top coat and because I don't want to move that foil, just slowly walking it and you can see when you top coat this the whole design comes together and you can see all that layering. Okay. Now that's going to cure for 30 seconds. I'm just going to move this out of the way. Um, but what's great about this as well is you can see patterns in the garden, inspiration anywhere, and you can just hold these up over it to see how that design would look and would actually interpret onto the nail. And I'll just show you this one that I'd done earlier. 
So there's lots of different effects that you can create. You can use the foils. And you can see when I do this, it's got that translucent look, which gives that real um, realistic effect of the tortoise shell. Again, the one I've just done now. You'll we'll see the two different finishes. So as I've already mentioned, segments are really in, so creating segmented designs. So if you see here, there's just a pop of colour, just out that cuticle zone maybe, or if you had the nail this way, just at the free edge and sides and corners. So you can recreate a lot of nail designs you might have previously done, but to make them suitable and viable for some winter trends, if you just create them in segments, and again, different patterns on different fingers. So create these segments on different areas and you'll be bang on trends this season. So to create the marble, there's lots of different ways to create marbles and each technician will have their own preference. I'm just taking again another one of these tiles and the rich tones that are in this season are emeralds, really dark piercing blues, really rich colours that reminds me of like an Indian wedding kind of um, really rich autumnal tones. So this blue actually has a little bit of sparkling. Well, then I'm just going for a lighter colour just to break up that marble. So whether you prefer to work with a dotting tool or a fine line brush, I prefer using a fine line brush. I'm just going to just move that out of the way off screen just so it doesn't affect the light, my lights. Now, a few different ways of doing this. You can put this on the nail and marble it on the nail, or you could even marble it slightly on your tile and then scoop it up and it's already created a marble effect for you. I'm just creating the circular shape. I just want a little bit more blue, so I'm now going to place that. Clean my brush just by twirling it. I'm pulling this out into shape and I'm just really lightly tickling it because what I don't want to do is affect that marble that I've created. So you can see, I'm just feathering it out neat because we don't want any area that is too thick otherwise it won't cure. If you want a little bit of another colour so the emerald just pick a little bit up on your brush. The trick with marble is not to try to try and make it not too perfect. If you're trying to get it all the same and uniform you'll just end up by blending it too well. So I'm just perfecting that shape. And that's where I want it. So I could do it here and then I could even do it there on the nail if I wanted as well, if we wanted um, a little bit more. But as mentioned, the negative space look is in. So just having segments of pattern um, is really on trend. So I'm going to cure that now for 30 seconds. I'm going to clean my brush on a napkin just to remove any of my excess gel. I'm not using any more of that, I don't need two layers. So I am just going to take a little bit of cleanser onto a napkin. And then I'm just going to wipe this clean and I could reuse that for my next client or you can just um, buy these in bulk and throw these away. So whether you use them back of a um, nail form, um, some aluminium foil, you might have a painting palette or even an uh, old kitchen tile that you might have lying around, they're great palettes to be able to work from and wipe clean. So I'm 
So awesome winter trends is alloys and metal pieces like this are really on trend. So rather than gems this season, you can invest in some of these metal alloys. You can get these off online online retailers. It's a really good price. And there's all sorts of different patterns and shapes that you can get that will just really finish your design off. So this one is a little bit too closed for the look that I want. So I just need to pull this out and stretch this a little bit. So it's very easy just by using your tweezers to just change the shape of these metal pieces. Let's take this out. I'm just going to place it there to see that it is the right shape. And I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to place it down whilst I get my gem glue. So what you need to use is um, something that you would adhere your gems with. This is the Crystal Nails Gem Glue. I'm just going to take a dotting tool or you can use a fine line brush. And I'm going to place right where I want to put that metal component. Now, most of these gem glues have a tacky layer when cured. So if we do that, what we're going to do is going to be leaving uncured um, gel on the client's nail, and then we have to try and seal it. So the easiest way of doing this, and this is something that you can then use when doing gems as well, is to take some non-wipe top coat, use a fine line brush and brush it over that gem glue. What that will do is it will act like a prong and it will secure it in place and then you won't have to worry about any uncured product. So I'm taking my tweezers, and just dropping that in, using the tip. press it into place. Once you're happy with that, that's going to cure for 30 seconds. It's not a thick um, metal component, so it doesn't need to cure for longer. If we are using something that is considerably thicker and the light will find it harder to penetrate through, we do need to cure that for longer and the client must have moved their hand around in the lamp to ensure a cure. If we were using something like this, for the light to be able to penetrate it, it's going to be harder. So something like this would require longer curing and moving the hand around in the lamp. So once that's cured, we are now going to take our top coat. So I'm using a non-wipe top coat and coating this whole design. Depending on how your client feels about having um, raised art on their nail, if they don't like it, you can invest in a thick top coat. So most brands, make sure you're using the same one that matches the brand of gel polish you're using, but most will have a slightly thicker top coat which you can apply and it will smooth over any of the 3D. So once that's ready, that's now going to cure. And then for one last design, I'm just going to show you a crackle effects, um, which animal trends, so the tortoiseshell's very in, animal prints, so um, like your lizard, your snake, um, that kind of animal print is really big this autumn, winter too. So sticking with the segments, I'm going to take some of the emerald green and this beautiful gold color and I'm just going to cover a portion of the nail. So I'm just creating 
just a, a, a bit of a random pattern, nothing um, too particular. So I'm just wanting a little bit of the green, a little bit of the gold, because I'm actually going to cover that. So I just want this to be able to show through. I'm now going to cure that for 30 seconds. And just while that one's curing, I can show you the finished marble segment nail. Just take it off there. And you can see for that marble one um, and the one I'm currently doing, I use these cover pink tips. So these are from Crystal Nails and um, they come cover pink, which is great if you're doing designs um, to have save having to do a cover pink base. So once that's done, what we're going to use is we are, this is crystal nails, mosaic crystal liquid. So it's like a crackle, but I might, you might remember the nail polishes um, that used to be around a long time ago, the crackle polishes. I think Jessica did some. So this is more of a sort of gel effect. I'm just using a very small amount. It's important to do this thin. And I'm now going to brush this. So depending on the area you're working on, you might want to use a fine line brush. I'm just doing a really thin coat of this. So when that dries, what it's going to do, it starts into crackle. So you can probably just see around the very edges, it's starting to crackle. And that is going to give you the easiest snake print, snake print effect rather than having to try and create it. So this is available in several different colors, whites there, white, pinks, peaches, and you can use any color underneath and marbles and different effects to then get different looks. And you'll see that starting to crackle through. So similar to the metal alloys we used on the previous design, I'm going to take these magic stripes. So these are the um, nail art stripes that you can place and you can actually bend into shape. So I'm just going to take quite a thin one I'm going to peel this off and I can do this while the crackle effect is finishing. So it saves me time in the salon. I'm going to use my tweezers to peel this up. And I'm just going to place this across the bottom. So this is another reason why we didn't need to worry about getting this line perfectly straight because we're covering it with this. So something like this is really on trend again this um, autumn winter and having the lines, the components, just to really finish your designs off. And they're so simple to do without having to worry about being super creative and artistic. Again, we didn't need to worry about that line because we're going to also place it here. And if we wanted this line to not be straight, all we do is bend it. And then you could create this on a curved effect as well. These are just the curved scissors because it's a curved tip. And you can see like this. Both matte and shiny effects are in this season. So to do something different, I'm just going to apply a matte top coat over this nail. Just let that settle. And you can see that full crackle effect has occurred now, so I'm able to do that. And I'm going to pop that in the lamp to cure for 30 seconds. So here's the previous two designs. So just to recap, the trends that are really in this awesome winter are segmented patterns, um, get your inspiration from animal prints, so uh, snake skin, lizard, um, tortoiseshell, 
they're already in and then the really deep um, autumnal tones emerald green bright blues and um, the pink that I use for that crackle effect and um, those really nice rich autumnal shades are the shades you want to be looking for this season now if I take this out and you can see the crackle effect that you get, which gives you that really nice um, print effect. And just with touches of highlights, so a little bit of foil, a metal component and the magic strips. And you can see how easy those designs are to create and you can re create, recreate those in the salon really quickly um, and you know, make good profits by being able to recreate these quickly. You can see how each of these is just a little bit different. And you can mix it up then also on your nails, on your client's nails as well. So I hope you've enjoyed that and I hope you've learned some really good um, tips and tricks um, to help you create your autumn winter nail designs in your salon and on your customers. Amazing, thank you so much, Katie. That was really, really interesting. I love these uh, segmented nail looks, very cool. Um, I think, um, just to let everyone know, I think we're having a little bit of trouble with the chat function on our platform at the moment. So people haven't been able to post their questions, which is such a shame because I'm sure everyone's got tons of questions for Katie. So I'm sorry about that. Um, Katie, I've got a couple of questions for you though, if that's okay. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I don't know whether, you could, whether you're able to turn your camera around or whether it's easier if we just do it. Like, yeah, I can. Uh, forget about that function, just bear with me. Yeah, so if anyone is watching live, apologies for that. We're trying to get the um, the chat function sorted out. This is the, the downside of going first, Katie. Sorry about this. <laughs> but yeah, it's all um, it's all a very new platform. So yeah, just getting every last little technical glitches sorted. But yeah, I mean, I think it was really, really interesting to see your demos. I think particularly these um, segmented patterns, they're great. I think um, particularly for clients that don't necessarily want to go for them full on nail art look, I'm sure, super popular for autumn. Yeah. Um, I was just going to ask, we did a, a feature actually quite recently on autumn winter nail trends. And one of the things that some people mentioned was that because um, people have been stuck indoors so long during lockdown and they weren't, uh, weren't really able to go crazy with their nails during summer, that perhaps for autumn we'll see um, a bit more kind of interesting nail art looks and brighter colours than we might usually for autumn. Do you think that's true? Do you think that we'll be working in a few more brights as well? Yeah, I think clients are going to go all out from not being able to have nail design. So I think as well, this is ways of those non-nail art clients being able to have something but without, as you say, with the segments having too much. And even looking at those like dark, darker tones, they're still like, bright like the emerald the blue they're still really bright tones but just that slightly subdued autumnal and um, I have seen loads of, of brights as well like um not quite towards your neons but in, in between these tones and neons so quite a lot of brights as well that people will be um as you say because they didn't have them in the summer having them mm. now. yeah and I guess yeah they've missed out their usual opportunity mm. to go for these brights. Yeah. And I think it's a little bit this autumn winter as well. Anything goes as well. Just yeah. uh, uh, brights, art, ev a bit of everything really. Fantastic. And um, another thing you mentioned during the demo and showed us some really great looks with um, the alloys and metal pieces, mm. and those rather than the gems for this season. Are there any other tips in terms of um, product in any kind of kit that people should be investing in for, for this season? So yeah, I just say really the, the the different components like that. So rather than gems, and the great thing about that for salons on return to the work is that these metal bits, the flakes and foils are a lot cheaper to invest in. So mm. um, most techs have probably got some lines around the salon that they've 
not necessarily used before or really known quite how to use them. Um, so the way I've, I've shown how to get those to last by using that gel and top coating it, that will ensure that they do last the clients they have to worry about them them coming off so foils um so i think you know lots of different foils again lots of customers have got them and um, the press on foils that you can get um uh, and and things like that so slightly different to your gems that have been around for years and um, it's a little bit something a little bit different yeah excellent Fabulous. And where do you look for inspiration for your trends? Because I mean, these are great. These are quite um, quite different as well. I think, um, you know, we're kind of keeping an eye on Instagram. And I love actually that nail window that you mentioned. I love that. I was looking at that on Instagram the other day. And that's great for just yeah. kind of getting some ideas from what's around you. But where do you or where do you advise other techs to look to try and get um, kind of make up their own trends and individual looks? So I was, you'll see things on Instagram. It's great. Um, everyone will be inspired by the text work and, and you know, that, that's fine. But what I would always do is I recommend looking at patterns, textures. Um, I always look to fashion as well. So I'm really, I really like the animal print look I have um, for years. Um, and one of my favorite designers to follow for that is Alessandra McQueen. So looking at the patterns of the dresses on the catwalks and just taking some inspiration from some of those outfits and patterns. Um, and outside's great because there's loads of, you know, loads of different patterns, clothes, um, but even you know, just this dress, you've got the white and the, the black pattern and things like that. So I think it's good to be able to draw inspiration from um, like fashion patterns textures mm -hmm. um, rather than just having to look at nail designs because I think when you look at a nail design especially when a customer brings that in you can sometimes feel a little bit under pressure to have to recreate it exactly the same now every tech works differently uh, I will create tortoiseshell differently to say you or someone everyone would have their own version of it and I think it's good to not have to feel pressure to do it exactly the same and that's why it can be good to recommend and advise your customers to only bring patterns and that kind of thing as inspiration and um, even creating a mood board on Pinterest that you could share with them. Excellent and, well, that's that's really good tips because I think as well for a lot of texts it's nice to put your own spin on things as well you don't yeah. want to just copying other text work do you so but fantastic yes yeah, some ideas from fabrics and patterns. And um, we are coming up to time anyway, Katie. So thank you so much for, for doing this. I think they were really, really thank interesting. You for me. Some great inspiration. And yeah, apologies for the technical hitches on the platform, but hopefully you all uh, got loads of advice and took a lot from Katie's demos. So thank you very much, Katie Barnes. Yeah, thank you. And yeah, we've got tons more um, sessions coming up on this stream. So do have a look at the lineup. We've got lots of hair waxing and skin sessions coming up over the next three days. And um, so yeah, we will see you again very soon. Bye. Bye.